G'day and welcome back to my channel. Well, this is where I left the St. Louis in the last video. We'd finished the masts, I'd worked out the crow's nest, I'd fixed up a lot of things. You know, she was glued together, she's ready to go, but no cannons, no cannons. So I've sort of been very busy the last couple of weeks, experimenting with things and messing about. And look, this is what I've come up with. Look at all of these cannons, nice and shiny in their little brass paint. And cannon ports with little fleur de -lis. You're going to see those later on. Every single one of those cannon port has a little blue panel with a fleur de lis on it. It's a you know, flower of the lily. All the other cannons are in the deck cannons, the broadside cannons here. Look, she is cannoned up to the teeth on this side. So would you like to see how I put all the cannons in, how I created the um, custom made, because these are slightly different to the kit, uh, cannon port lids, and how I got the whole thing to fit together? You would? Great! <laughs> so would I. Roll the music. <laughs> This is pretty well where we left off last time. In the last video, I had detailed the masts and they're in. So there's a whole lot of work that went into that. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch that one. Now, there's a few things left to put on the deck. There's uh, this boat, and it's huge, absolutely huge. Uh, I'm not really happy about that. There's supposedly, which way does it go? That way. Supposedly, this thing here is supposed to sort of fit over there, but um, I went a different way because. Although this is used, it does protect all the people there that are on the deck, the sailors. Uh, you don't have to have it. I mean, it's a thing, and it did exist, but it looks a lot prettier if I leave it open. And if that's the case, there's nowhere to sort of sit this huge little launch here. Now, looking in the paintings of ships from this era, often, especially when you see them in combat, they don't have this on the deck. It is behind and tethered. So that basically the decks are clear, so the cannons can run and everybody can fight. So that's what I'm going to do with mine. This little boat, I'll detail it up as a little kitten itself, and it will be swimming behind the ship. Now, Craig sent me a few things that are quite nice. Craig did all those stanchions for my um, my Schnell boat. Now, he sent me, I don't know if you'll see them, these are pulley blocks, and they're 3D printed. So there's all various kinds there. There's, um, you know, twos and fours, and it's very nice. So I'm dying to try those out to see how they work compared to, you know, the wooden traditional wooden blocks. Because if um, he can do a whole stack of these, and it's only going to cost, like, a couple of shekels, that's going to be better than the 10, 11, 12 shekels that I spent to get all the blocks, wooden blocks, to do this kit. So that's worth thinking about. He also sent me a few more cannons in case I run short. And um, I'm sort of tossing up whether these look nicer than the ones that I've done for the deck, but I've sort of gone all that trouble with those ones for the deck. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to make a decision there. Um, they'll be fairly easy to paint up and they replace basically the very small low pounders. So these tiny little guys here. That's what they replace. So they're that size. And those ones just, um, they sit on the deck. So what they have here on the St. Louis, as far as I can tell from my research, is this level, they're 24 pounders. So they're 24 pounders are all on there, the big guns. Then you go up to the next level, and they're 12 pounders. You know, they halve. Then they halve again to six pounders on the quarter deck and the forecastle deck. And then you've got these tiny little sort of um, cradle guns here. They're sort of, oh, they're, they're little. They're probably a two or a three pounder. I don't know. But um, there's not much to them at all. So that's the thing. Big down the bottom, and as you go up, they come smaller. Now, if you have been watching my series, you know that I cut out this piece here. Actually made a whole scratch piece. So the deck would go through, which is basically how it would have really been, as opposed to the kit had a solid panel there. But it had a solid panel there because, really, there would have been this silly thing over the top okay so if I'm not going that silly thing I open mine up as it should be and I also did a whole lot of scratch work on this panel see it's got doors and things okay so um, that's where we're at but the only mistake I made is I needed to extend the mast through so I put a little piece in there okay but if you look at the look say that angle you'll notice I've done it straight up and down but of course the main mast here 
it tilts backwards. So I need to fix that. That's something I need to fix. I've also got to paint up the um, lantern. Now I had thought of trying to do that out of clear plastic and everything. I could, but I'd probably spend like another month just trying to build that one piece. I'm going to try and paint it up first. I've got some nice chrome paint that I might be able to do the panels with, so it'll look very shiny. And then I'll paint it up and see how it goes. So it's not a little bad piece on its own. It's huge. It's pretty huge. So that leads us to where we've got to work at today. And that is all the cannons and all the cannon port lids. They need to go on. And I've also got to look at putting in basically the channel boards, which will need some modification because I am not using their plastic dead eyes there and that uh, plastic rigging. I'll be doing my own. So I've got to look at that. Well, what I think I need to do first is um, paint these up. Stonerays primer has gone down very nicely and I've already started detailing some of the gun port lids. I'll show you that in a sec. Now this, um, this yellow that I've used is a great base primer to put on the brass. And I've just done that with my Posca pens. Right? So that's just Posca pens there, wiped on. And then what I'll do is when I cut them off, I dry brush them. They're, they're sort of in a um, gold colour Posca pen, but then I've got some brass colour that I've made up, which I've used elsewhere and um, what I use on the other guns. And then I dry brush that on, just takes it down from that yellowish and makes it a little sort of whiter and more like brass. So that's quite good. And these are the tiny little guns. These are the uh, 12 pounders. These are the 24 pounders. So they're on now. I've already done a few. So you can see the effect is quite nice. And you notice the underside of the cannon lid is blue and it's even got a fleur de lis on there. You can't quite see it at the moment. What I started doing is I started using my Posca pens and worked out a way to get the blue on the back of the lid. And then I took me about two or three goes. In fact, I spent a whole weekend trying to figure out how to get a gold Fleur de Lis on here cleanly. I tried stencils. I tried all kinds of tricks. I tried painting with a brush. I'm not very good. And in the end, the solution was so easy. I'm a mathematician, of course. So I worked it out with a pencil. <laughs> yes, I got this beautiful gold pencil. It's a Prismacolor. And these are lovely. It's it's like painting, but with the control of a pencil. They, they are amazing. So with them finely sharpened, I actually made up a whole sheet of, um, of the little squares, right? Because when I checked some uh, drawings the Duckett sent me of this ship, I found some really good uh, rendering, you know, basically just a person's interpretation, but it was so accurate in every other way, I think they'd done the research. And one of the things I noticed is, with the counter port lids, is they sort of have a little rebate in them. So you've got the counter port lid, and then there's a little face inside, because obviously the lid comes down and there is a little rebate you can see inside the hole. So that's more accurate. And that little rebate area was blue, and you'll see little blue edges show up along there. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up making little squares, and then painting those blue, and then using the pencil. Now, a few people have asked me about the brass. They said, well, aren't they bronze? You know, they were bronze cannons, or aren't they metal, black ones? Well, look, there were bronze cannons early on, and there were metal iron, iron cannons, the black ones, from about the 18th century, right? But in the 17th century, there's a period where there's a great change, where ship design is changing a lot. You're going from these pointy galley prows to a much blunter sort of brow and the shapes are different. The rigging is becoming much more simplistic. Like the rigging on this is, is insane if you actually do it all. There are a lot more lines to try and control the sails. Later on the British worked out much better ways. But with the cannons you have a transition period from bronze 
to brass and from brass to iron. But basically the French cannons predominantly in the 17th century were brass. So for this ship, 24 pounders, brass. 12 pounders, brass. Yep. And my little ones, I'll make them brass as well, just for the sake of keeping the style. So that is important. Now another thing here, you probably only see a little close up if I show a photo, is every one of my cannon ports I have rigged with a cord. Because every other ship I've ever built, you glue the cannon port lids on and there they are, sticking out, you know, at the angle. And there's really no reason they should sit like that because they're hinged up, they're just going to flop down again. And what they do in reality is every cannon port lead has lines that go back that pull the lid up from the inside. So that line is equivalent to the roof or the ceiling of that gun deck. So on the ceiling of that gun deck, there's a line that goes through. The guys inside, the crew, pull that, whoop, cannon port lid comes up. And then when it goes down, they just kind of just let it go. It'll go down, they lock it off inside. So I've closed off these three here because they're kind of weird. Like this one wasn't on the nice level with those guns. So I thought, no, I don't want one sitting there. This one here, well, every time it would have gone off, would have shattered all the bloody china and all the crystal glasses in the, the officer's quarters there. So that seems sort of stupid. And the same with that one. A little too close there. I mean, you know, they'd be sitting there, you know, playing their violins, eating their cheese, drinking their wine, and somebody goes and fires a cannon off. Absurd. <laughs> But no, aesthetically, I thought, I'll just go with the run all the way along here. There's one here at the bow, which they have moulded on. I don't know why. I nearly thought of cutting it open myself, but uh, I'd come this far. I, I thought I'll leave that one shut as well. So I'm only running brass cannons on the main runs. And I think that'll look a lot more attractive. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I detail the lids on both sides, including making those rebates and then putting the blue section on and drawing on the little chevrons or the fleur de lis, right? And, uh, and then I'll also show you how I rig these because it took about 10 goes until I worked out a really easy method to add this tiny little bit of rope that holds my cannon port lid in place. All right, let's get on with that. Next, I need to make the little squares, which are going to be like the little rebated areas for inside those uh, cannon port lids. So I'd sprayed up that whole sheet of blue and measured it out, and they're going to replace those ones which are a bit horrible there. What I need to do though is I just need to brown out where the edges are going to be because these little uh, blue squares are going to be slightly less wide. While I wait for those to dry, I'll um, get a few of these cannons off. I've been dying to put these on. They're um, it always seems to be that sort of, you know, the the icing on the cake for the kit sort of is when you put the guns on, which is, you know, it's just must be a boy thing. Must be a boy thing. Now, these weren't too bad. They require just a little bit of cleaning up. You had to make sure that the uh, joining tab where they poke into the hull, make sure that's all nice and clean of any sort of flash or rubbish. Otherwise, they're a bugger to put in. Now, the ends, I don't like to have my cannons capped. I like them wholly. I like holy cannons, right? Well, a little hole in there. So um, score a tiny little starter point with a knife and then get out the pin vise. And I'm using about a 0.6, I think, this stage. Yeah, 0.6 millimeter. And um, carefully as you go, make sure that you are centered. And I just drill enough that I can actually put a toothpick in there to hold it when I'm painting later. So it's not much, it's only about two or three millimeters. And it just gives that little hole which I think really improves it. And to make sure it stays nice and round, I use my good old corn on the cob, <laughs> and that pushes it open. Now, now that I've got that all sanded up, I can touch it up with my Posca pen. Okay, that's got it gold, but I want to be brass. So i would made up this solution of brass. It's a bit of silver, a bit of gold, that sort of stuff. It didn't airbrush very well, and I sort of, it didn't go on neat, but I found with the Posca, pens underneath and then doing a dry brush technique I could lighten the color of that gold soften it off and get the brass look that I was after 
Uh, it takes a couple of sort of dry coats. You've got to sort of take your time, be patient. Now, Posca pens also work really well for fine detailing on those um, cannon port lids because they've got like a little metal strap there, a hinge. So um, that little fine point Posca pen is just perfect for getting in and basically doing those. I mean, it's paint. It's just like doing the brush, but it's a pen. Now this was the best order that I could find to do things and that was drill those holes on the side first and put the brass cannons in. Um, seemed like they would be in the way but no it, it actually works so much better. But I mean later on it was a real pain. Now the little cannon ports here and lids they come off nicely and they clean up fairly well and I can use my Posca pen to just tidy up the edges. Easy as that. This is the thing, Posca pan is like the best thing since sliced bread. Okay, now I need to make that little sort of piece that goes on there. The one that I've cut off the um, sheet is slightly larger than I needed. I knew that because I need to actually trim them perfect and get really straight edges. And uh, you won't get that sort of off the sheet. So best to make them large, cut them down. Always easy to go smaller, very hard to go bigger. A little bit of sand up on those and they should fit perfectly on there. Yep, that's good. Now, I'll need to um, paint the edges, because otherwise I'll have little white edges left over the plastic. So I've got my blue that I've been using, and that goes on very nicely. So there you go. That's going to make that look pretty. Now, we've got that. We need the Fleur de Lis. I'm going to use a little Prismacolor pencil. Now, I've been drawing these so much, and all the different methods that I tried, that I pretty well got it down pat. <laughs> As you can see, I knock it out pretty quickly. Now, we need a hole in the top of that um, that cannon port lid, that's where the string's going to go in. But you need to put that hole in first before you put the blue rebated piece in. So that was important for the method. So yeah, that hole's there. Can't quite see it in that photo, but it is there. And then there is the little fleur de lis clues are on there. Now, bit of slow zap, bit of string. Yep, we are now ready to rig these little buggers. So what I do is I rig them to the cannon port lid before it goes on the ship. This was the best method. So that can now poke into a little hole there and it stops on the rebated piece. Now we can glue the cannon port lid to the ship and everything is a lot easier because that'll just go in horizontally, no problem at all. See it rests on the cannon, that is so easy. Now we take a toothpick and push that through to get the angle that I want and we leave that to set. Once it is fully set, then I can take the thread and put it through that hole that I pre-drilled. And there you go. Bingo bongo. That goes together so easily. But it took me about a day to figure that out. I could tell you. There we have it. All the cannon are in and they've been brassed. All the flaps are in. They've got their little fleur de lis on and they've all got their returning ropes. I've also put the cannons in on this level, including the deck ones, which I'm going to tie to the deck, but I'll do that next time. And the tiny little six pounders, I've put a couple of those in just so that you can see what's going on. So the 
whole broadside is there. Well, bar the few back here around the toilets and the officers' rooms, which we explained they, they wouldn't be open because of the wine and cheese. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Anyhow, that's it for this video. Look, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did like this video, hit the like, okay? And if you've got something to say, just be respectful about it. But comment, by all means. Join my channel, right? And you can do that by subscribing to the channel, or you can join Patreon or YouTube. And if you suddenly have the desire and you've got bags of money, hit the super thanks, because with super thanks, I'll get an instant payment, and that really helps support all the work that I do on this channel to produce these sort of videos. All right, again, hope you enjoyed that. There'll be more soon, but for now, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Denny. <laughs>